Hello everyone. I want to cover some more recent arrivals today and they're all for handheld gaming. Yay! Okay, I've got two for the Switch. That's technically a hybrid, but I play my Switch more often handheld than I do docked. So for me, it's, it's more in the handheld bracket. So uh, let's start with the um, uh, two Switch games I got recently. And you, you'll probably be familiar with them. The first one, almost inevitably, is Hades. And I'll just get the cellophane off. There we are. It says Battle Out of Hell. Hades, obviously, Hell. And this game, by Supergiant Games, has pretty much dominated every scoreboard, um, certainly by reviewers, but the feedback from players is the same. Everybody says it's simply a great game. Now, I do realise that it is very fast-paced and might be difficult for me with my hand condition, but as usual, all I can say is I'll give it a go. And with a game this good, I simply had to have it. So let's have a look what's in here. Oh, there is a card included. And it has a code on the back. The Hades original soundtrack by award-winning composer Darren Korb features two and a half hours of blood-pumping music created for the game. You can redeem your digital copy here. Very good. That's the soundtrack. And this is the character booklet. So in case you're not familiar with Hades, there are probably very few people, but I'll just mention it. It's classified as a roguelike action RPG. Very, very fast paced, as I mentioned. So there's a very small booklet here. And the back cover reads, Battle Out of Hell, defy the god of the dead as you hack and slash out of the underworld in this roguelike dungeon crawler. Dungeon crawler here is the trigger word for me. I love my dungeon crawlers. So let's have a quick look at the character booklet. Now, Zagreus is Prince of the Underworld and one of the main characters, I believe. Hades would obviously be an important character. And Nyx, Knight Incarnate, Knight as N-I. Hypnos is Sleep Incarnate and Thanatos obviously is Death Incarnate. If you know your Greek, which... I don't. I've just picked up a few words here and there. Now there is a very cute character called Dusa, a duty-bound gorgon. Uh, it seems to be clasping some kind of feather duster. I suppose it gets dusty in hell as well. The Cerberus, a notorious watchdog, and Skelly, a training dummy. Achilles, Patroclus, all the characters and heroes that we know from the ancient classic myths and legends. Orpheus and Eurydice. Orpheus with the lyre, which he's famous for. He's the musician and Eurydice was his love. And if you know that story, you will know it's a very sad story and I won't mention it here in case it plays a part in the game. Uh, Charon, of course, we know as the boatman across the river Styx to take the souls into the underworld and Sisyphus is a tortured soul. A poor chap had to roll that boulder up the mountain forever and ever and just near the top it always rolls down again, doesn't it? 
Alecto, a tormentor of passions, and Tisiphone, a tormentor of murder. Goodness me. They had some fun designing these characters. Theseus is the hero of Athens, and you will know him, of course. Asterius, the bull of Minos. Well, Theseus was, of course, known for going into the labyrinth and slaying the Minotaur. And I believe he found his way out again because he had a piece of thread that Ariadne gave him and that he laid through the maze, through the paths, and then that way he found his way out again, otherwise he would have perished. That's just me from reading all these legends like 50 years ago, when I, well, more than 50 years ago, when I was a kid. And what you read as a child, you don't forget. You know, it really, really lives on in your mind, especially, of course, stories like these. Zeus, uh, king of the Olympians, and Poseidon, god of the sea. Athena, goddess of wisdom, and Ares, god of war. Both are also very well known, and Athena is indeed usually portrayed with an owl, an icon of wisdom. Maybe I will look like an old owl one day, and I go, woot, woot. Aphrodite, goddess of love, and Dionysus, god of wine. Artemis is, of course, the goddess of the hunt, usually shown with bow and arrow, and Hermes, god of swiftness, usually shown with wings, often on his shoes. And the last ones are Demeter, the goddess of the seasons, and Chaos, primordial originator. Now, from memory, Demeter had a daughter, Persephone. So that's a very small, but a very nice character booklet. Now, the second uh, Switch game is Deadly Premonitions. I'll just... You know, I haven't quite worked out yet how to get the cellophane off these Switch games efficiently. I find it easier, to be honest, with the PlayStation games. They often have the little pull band that you can get off at the bottom, and then it's really easy. But these ones are sealed up like they want to make sure nobody can get into it. If you know a little trick for how to quickly get the cellophane off, please let me know. So we have Deadly Premonition Origins and I think it's classified as a survival horror game, the Deadly Premonition series. I'm keen to play the second one eventually. I have actually got the original Deadly Premonition as a digital game on my PS3 and I started playing it and I really, really liked it. I was straight away drawn into this really strange, weird world that FBI agent Francis York Morgan has to investigate. So the game originally came out in 2010. I, I found the controls on the PlayStation, whether that was a problem with the digital PS3 version, I don't know. Um, I found the controls, I think it's all tank controls, really, really clunky. And it made the gameplay a lot slower than I reckon it should be. Uh, and being a bit of an impatient person, I sort of thought I wish there was a better way to play this. And then I had a look at people playing the Origins version on the Switch, and it seemed to look more comfortable. Also, the visuals were a bit better, like they've done a bit of work on it. Uh, so I thought, this is maybe the way to play it, and maybe play it handheld, maybe that'll be possible. 
I think that would be really cool. So I really want to get into the game and, and figure out finally what it's all about and what the mystery is and then go on to the second game. So that's why I got the Switch version and for some reason getting the physical was quite inexpensive uh, compared with the digital for me here in my region. So, so next up I have two games for the 3DS. I'm just trying to fill in the last little gaps I have in my library there. I decided to get the Pokemon game from that generation, the remake of Sapphire called Alpha Sapphire. You see, why can't the Switch games have this little Nintendo, seller, you know, printed Nintendo uh, little band you can just pull off the cellophane and then it's a lot easier? That can't be too difficult to do. Please, Nintendo, would you please think of my hands and, and make the cellophane easier to come off? So yes, just a usual um, bump inside the uh, case and the cartridge. I just want to make sure I have at least one game from each generation. For the older ones, I have most of them. The newer generation, I'm not quite so into, but um, with the 3DS now coming to an end. And here I've got a second Yokai game. You may remember that in one of my recent Arrivals videos previously, I showed you the first Yokai Watch game I got, and it included a little um, medal with it. Uh, so this is one of the games from the second, what do you call them, second series. I mean, they did the same thing as, as with Pokemon. You you can get variations on the game. So uh, this one's called Bony Spirits. I think those are Fleshy Spirits. And then, of course, there's the elusive Yokai Watch 3, which very few people have seen out in the wild because physical copies just aren't around, never have been in my region and are quite hard to get hold of. And now we'll go on to the Vita games. Um, they actually form the bulk of today's uh, arrivals. I bought two games pre-owned. That was the only way I could get them. The first one is Dynasty Warriors Next. And I felt like I really wanted to have that in my collection. One thing that always irked me was that I bought it originally. I had it as a new game. This was years ago. And then for some odd reason, I decided to sell it or trade it in. I still can't figure that one out. But that was probably before the time when I realized that I really, really had to hang on to my physicals. Um, so I was always aware there was this gap in my uh, collection and I thought um, I better get it. And the second one is another uh, Warriors game in the Samurai Warriors series. Samurai Warriors 4, Mark 2. Fates collide. Experience the saga through personal tales of the series' most beloved samurai. Now this one I had to get from Asia. It's a Region 3 publication. I think that I'm not sure whether that's the only way you can get a physical copy, but it might well be. And it was actually quite difficult. I had to look for quite some time, but I finally found it. And in case you're wondering what that number two is on in the title of the game, uh, this is the revised version of the original Samurai Warriors 4, which released for um, console platforms and possibly PC as well. Okay, now we get on to the new Vita games, and they're all from East Asia Soft. 
who are one of the very, very few companies left still publishing Vita games, and they do so regularly and consistently. So, as a big Vita fan, I support the effort to bring out those very last Vita games, and I buy almost all of the ones that I can get hold of, because they go on sale at an possible time for me personally at 4 a.m. I sometimes miss a copy and it's already um, sold out by the time I get there. Uh, but I get hold of quite a lot, so that's nice. Um, I wanted to show you these utterly cute little sticker sheets. They are so adorable. And they go with this game, which comes in two parts. And I'll just get the cellophane off because that causes a lot of reflection. Okay, so we, here we have the first game in the series called Yume Utsutsu Remaster. And the second part is called Yume Utsutsu Re. After. Now from the cover already you can probably tell uh, what the story is about. It features two girls and it has the sort of style of a visual novel. So that's exactly what it is. Yume Utsutsu uh, Remaster and Reafter is a girl's love adventure story uh, set in a small game studio. And that's what caught my eye. I thought this could be interesting. The setting is a traditional old town, not far from the imperial capital of Tokyo, uh, where a small game studio called Eureka Soft has set up shop. The heroine Ai, a country girl, visits her sister Kokoro, who works in a game studio. On site at the company's office, stranger characters appear than you would ever meet in a game. Now that is a steep promise, because I have met some very strange characters in many different games. Uh, so I hope they're not exaggerating too much here. Your world will expand by the tiniest bit. Okay, it's expanding. Only a tiny bit. That's okay. Expansion is good. The game production story begins. So let's have a look inside the box. It will have the usual contents uh, because the East Asia Soft Limited Editions are standardised and they always have the game, a fully illustrated art book, a numbered certificate and a printed manual. Okay, I need to correct myself here. They don't always have precisely these ingredients. In this case it says there is an art book and in the second game there is an original soundtrack. Uh, so in most uh, limited editions you get either or usually a soundtrack. But in this case, because there are two parts, they've gone for both an art book and a soundtrack, which, of course, I am thrilled about. So I'll just have a look in the first box. And that's the game. And this is the inside of the case for Yume Utsutsu Remaster. And it comes with uh, one of these tiny printed manuals uh, showing the controls, explaining a bit about the story, uh, showing the characters, again with a bit of a description, quite a few of the characters, and the trophies at the end. And that's the back cover of the manual. Uh, so that's quite nicely done. And the limited editions all come with a numbered certificate. As you will know by now, because I've done 
so many of these East Asia soft limited editions. And here comes the interesting bit, the art book. And it is just that. It is simply art. There is no uh, text with it or anything. It is simply still images from the game. And some are, as would be in the nature of the game, uh, considering it's a girl-girl love story, some are very slightly risque or fan servicey. Uh, I won't uh, show anything too much, but um, it's very tastefully done. I really don't think there's any reason for anyone to get upset over this. It all looks very gentle and sweet to me. And here is um, an array of some different costume outfits. Yes, lots and lots of different outfits, which may well be for the characters in a game they're working on. And here are the cute little characters which I'd already shown you on the sticker sheets. Uh, so this is a nice little art, art book or a booklet. It's not very big, 48 pages. And I won't open up the second box here because the contents will be very similar apart from having a soundtrack with it. Now the next limited edition from East Asia Soft is Kawaii Desu Desu. I'll just get the cellophane off. So here's the box. And back cover. It says on the back, for fans of fast-paced beat-em-ups, you will feel right at home here. And the edition contains, in this one, the official soundtrack, numbered certificate and printed manual. The game features supernatural beings that find themselves incarnated as cute Japanese idols, obviously. Halfway between cute and terrifying, these hellish idols start a competition that spans the world with a singular goal to decide who can claim the throne of the underworld. One reviewer for uh, the Noisy Pixel site titled his review Arthritis on the Go because it's a real what measure. <laughs> So I will have to play that in very short bursts. I believe it's not a very long game. So here's the game and I'll just get the um, get the cellophane off. This is for the benefit of those who really, really like to see the cellophane come off. I have some cellophane fans here on the channel. So this is Kawaii Death to Death. Yes, there is one of those tiny manuals inside showing the controls, characters and trophies. Now, I've had these little printed manuals before with East Asia Soft Games, but I have to say, for brevity, this one beats them all. So I reckon this is one of those games you play in short bursts in between, you know, when you've got five or ten minutes here or there. Here's the soundtrack. And I suppose that makes sense for a game that features cute pop idols. The uh, numbered certificate, of course. Next up is Halloween Forever. Now, this game first came out uh, digitally on the Vita store some time ago. I don't have a date, sorry. Could be as long ago as 2019, I'm not quite sure. 
and I'll just get the cellophane off. And here we have Halloween Forever. This game, I remember, was actually really, really popular when it came out. A lot of people bought it digitally and it was well reviewed in the Vita community and definitely one of the better platformers. I do remember that. I never bought it digitally. I don't think so. And then I was, of course, delighted when I heard that East Asia Soft was going to do a physical. There had been a lot of requests for this particular title to be printed physically, and they were able to do it. And here we have a very striking cover. Now, the description for Halloween Forever says something mysterious is happening in the pumpkin patch this Halloween. You control Pumpkin Man, a humanoid pumpkin thing animated by occult forces on a quest to discover why things are so creepy. Why, indeed, we all need an answer to that. And you vomit candy corn. Charming. A pumpkin platformer of distinction. And here we have the game. Adventure through weird and spooky worlds in search of your destiny. Meet chainsaw maniacs, undead sorcerers, spooky bats and lots of skeletons on your way. And there we are, another printed manual. Control layout, the different levels explained, and the trophies. Aha! I think this is how the candy corn is ejected from Pumpkin Man, as usual. And I have two more games to go. And this is Death Tales by Arcade Distillery. There we go. And here's the box art for Death Tales. The developer of Arcade Distillery, Luke Bernard, is well known in the indie scene and in the Vita community. He released uh, most of his games back then for the Vita. I remember I first came across Arcade Distillery when I supported what I think was their first Kickstarter and it was for Plague Road and I recall um, supporting that and then receiving the game. Embark on an adventure as a new reaper who has gone rogue. I have to mention about arcade distillery games, I think they are an acquired taste. Luc Bernard has a very, very distinctive art style. You either like it or you don't. I don't dislike the art style. I think it's actually really expressive and, and clever in many ways. Uh, my problem is that I find in a game it's almost too overpowering. There are so many colours, so many shapes assaulting your eyeballs all the time that I sort of, I blink and I think, oh goodness, how do I distinguish the, the characters from the background? It's that vivid. Uh, some people love that and don't have a problem with it and I find it a bit difficult. Now, um, Death Tales is described as a 2D side-scrolling hack and slash. I hope that's correct. I don't know. Sometimes descriptions for games can vary wildly between reviewers, but that sounds about right. Um, the, I find the arcade distillery games tend to mix 
often a variety of genre. You can get a bit of platforming, a bit of RPG style gameplay, a bit of hack and slash, all sorts of things mixed together. So this is the um, soundtrack for Death Tales. And there are 12 tracks on the disc. Here we go. Learn powerful attacks against hordes of enemies. Collect equipment and spells. Complete quests for a cast of quirky characters. Over 40 pieces of equipment for you to acquire to customize your Reaper. Make difficult choices in this grim yet richly illustrated 2D world. And we have another printed manual for Death Tales. The control scheme, a little bit of background about the game. the characters and the trophies. And the last game is Task Force Campus. So on to the last game, Task Force Campus. So here is the numbered certificate. soundtrack with 11 tracks on it and of course the most important thing the game itself now task force campers has drawn inspiration from the golden age of japanese shoot 'em ups task force campers combines retro action with modern conventions, adding new mechanics and randomly generated stages with handcrafted bosses. Well, I am happy to hear that they were crafted individually and by hand because I don't like my bosses mass produced. Rhythmic gameplay and a pulsing soundtrack work together to create an intense audio-visual experience. Now, I honestly can't remember off the top of my head uh, what the reviews were like for it. I don't remember anything negative. So here's the printed manual again. And it shows the uh, control scheme, which, as you would expect with a shmup, is pretty straightforward. The different pilots are shown, so that's the character cast, I imagine. And the trophies. I would call this another manual on the brief side. As you know, I don't often play shoot 'em ups. It's not really my kind of thing, uh, and it's a bit difficult. But I do occasionally, and I prefer them on the Vita. I find that easiest, really, uh, rather than any other console. So occasionally I will get one. Look at all the cellophane. I will now, as usual, do a quick pan with the camera around the table.
And that was it for today. I think we had a good workout with the old cheese knife. Thank you very much for watching and as always please keep well. I'm Food for Dogs. Bye bye.